For the past few months, I tried to develop a game engine in C++ and Vulkan, and this month we are finally adding some Lua scripting and the ability to play the scene inside the editor. Okay, so today we have a very basic scene here with a lot of static meshes. Well, in fact, every component in this engine, in this scene here, is currently a static mesh. And today we're trying to add some very basic Lua scripts to modify the transforms at runtime. In fact, uh, the helmet mesh and the backpack mesh already has the script attached to it. It's this little basic Lua script here. Well, this video is not a Lua tutorial, so I won't go into detail about how you would write Lua code here, but the Lua script is pretty basic. It's just a table in Lua. In this language, everything is a table, and we just return the script table to represent a script. And just like any other game engine, in the script, you will have to define functions that the engine will have to call later. So for a bare minimum, a script will be attached to a component, detached from a component, and also updated every frame with some delta time. And we can start using the engine to do some basic programming here. Uh, so for local LD equals require Ludens. Ludens is the name of the game engine here. And LD is like a local alias for the module. So we can, for example, we can log using the ld debug.log function. So script attached to, and we can use a format string to get the name of the component here. We can use self to refer to the script table itself inside a method. So we can have, we can start to put variables here, right? And we can set the name equals component get name to query the name of the component. And similarly, during detach, we can also say script detached from name. And if we run this little scene here with this play in editor button, you could see that here we have some locks here, like the script attached to the backpack and damaged helmet here. So although there's only like one script defined here, since it is attached to these individual components, each component will have a script instance during runtime. And this is why we see like two locks during attach and two locks during detach. All right, but we're more interested inside the update function because this is what the script will be called for every single frame. So we can do something like querying the input, like Luden's input dot get key down L and put this inside a if statement. So every single frame, we check if the L key is pressed. And we can, of course, debug log L key pressed when this happens. And if we run the scene again and press the L key, you can see that uh, we have a log here. And again, it's logging twice because we have two instances with the same logic here. Like when I detach, like two logs here. We can also use get key instead of get key down. And this will basically return true as long as the key is being held. So we can do something like while the key, space key is held down, do something. And uh, I think we can rotate, try and rotate it, the mesh. So we can do something such as local rotation equals component transform get rotation. And of course, we will have documentation on how you call these Lua functions here. So basically, the rotation gives you a three vector in degrees rotation. And we can kind of get the rotation in y axis and add by a certain amount, let's say 30 degrees per second. That's that's pretty slow. Maybe make it a little faster. So, and after we set the rotation here, we will have to write it back to the transform. Again, this is like very early API, so we have getters and setters. This could change. And we set the rotation to this new rotation. 
and if we run the scene and press space here, you can see every time I, I don't know if you can hear this, but while I am holding down the space key, it is spinning here. And of course, we can also add the script to this cat mesh component. So it's, please ignore the very basic user interface here. It's very early, but here we can add the same script to individual components. And now if I press space, every component with this script will have the same functionality, basically. All right, so instead of a constant here, I think we can start parameterizing. So self dot, let's do rotation speed here. Let's put this here, rotation speed, give it a default of 360 here. You can also do some translation. Um, so for here, let's just say local position equals component transform. We all of course have a get position. And when let's say the H key is pressed, then we can do a position dot X equals position dot X plus self dot movement speed over delta time. I think it's movement speed. Yeah, it's here. And if the L key is pressed, then we can do the translation in the opposite direction. So in the negative x axis. And uh, of course, set position. And if we run this script again, inside the scene, if I press H and L and yeah, they, yeah, we can start simulating some movement, some translations inside the scene here. The rotation is kind of slow, I think. We can do 440 degrees, maybe double the movement speed. And you can see the prototyping is super fast here. Partly because Lua is a interpreted language. And we can also set the mesh of the component here. Let's also set this to the, where is it? The little cat here. And oh, it's it's super small. If I scale this longer, it looks more like a rat, like maybe something like this. Okay, okay, it's still a little bit buggy. I have to fix the gizmos, but oh my goodness, what is this? What the hell is this? So yeah, we can finally do some scripting here. And currently we only have mesh components, but I'm looking forward to adding something like audio components. And for audio components, we can do something like component, I don't know, play sound or something like that. Lots of possibilities here. I'm just happy that we finally have some scripting here. And of course, basic transform rules still apply here because the hat is a children of the cat component. So whenever the cat moves, of course the hat needs to follow it. So yeah, that's that's pretty much what you expect from any game engine here. The hierarchy represents the transform relationships as well. So yeah, that's about it for this month. And uh, I kind of want to do a bigger code review, a longer video once Amazon delivers my goddamn microphone. And because uh, I've been working on this code base for like, what, six months already? And it's it's not a small code base. It's not large, but it's not small either. So I kind of want to do like a code review of uh, all the modules. So far, we have a qu quite a few modules already. Kind of want to do a longer code review video. So if you're interested, um, please consider subscribing. And uh, I'll see you.